Thank you very much, Brad. Uh, I would like to thank you for your kind invitation, and also Stefan for the support and help. I appreciate it. And uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, it's my first time in uh, Vienna, not as a tourist, <laughs> which is different. And uh, uh, okay, let's just start the, the, the background already mentioned by Gareth. So let's just start the presentation. But before going to the topic, uh, I would like to go uh, and uh, give you a little bit uh, a broader overview of what we are doing in case you're, you're interested in, uh, in our work and possible collaborations. And so on the years, we have, uh, um, let's see whether this works. Yes. Okay. Along the years, we have been interested in a number of material science uh, 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 systems from the theory point of view. Uh, the cardinal or sort of class materials of class addition, one that I, would have, uh, I could have talked about, but we also interested in methods for hierarchical response. Also, I return transport into the materials, and uh, uh, we had a collaboration with Python Etzer on surface science and uh, to be of side on uh, metal surfaces. And then, uh, uh, certainly, one of uh, our uh, big interests uh, in the last 20 years or more is uh, uh, the topic of nonstructured metals and metal oxide. Uh, I don't need to uh, explain why these systems are so interesting from uh, both the fundamental and uh, the uh, application point of view. Uh, you know that uh, in terms of uh, metal particles, the physics of confinement, metallic bonds is very interesting, plastic and so on, but also the metal, both metal and metal oxide, with their localized electrons, uh, changing functional type, shape, composition, fields of one particle. And, they're very interesting, and there is a lot, there is a lot of applications in catalysis. Uh, so our approach is a traditional uh, standard approach, uh, let's say physical chemical approach. So uh, I think that uh, I mean uh, it's very in tune with uh, the perspective of the TAC approach, which is to draw inside from this to this. Uh, interesting but rather complicated systems called model uh, web characterized systems. Of course, it is simplistic to think that you can directly carry over the results from uh, that you get uh, uh, from model system web characterized into real materials. But at least we can, I think, we can test approaches and methods and validate these methods, concepts, and also. What is difficult or what's the challenge is to translate these model results into real systems and leading to design, materials design. So uh, catalysis is one of the fields that we're uh, interested in. And uh, uh, how to deal with catalysis? Uh, these are the methods that uh, I don't have the time to go into uh, details, but that works. Have been strongly interested and we have derived the uh, methods for uh, structural prediction and structural dynamics. And in particular, we have derived the uh, global optimization methods that uh, um, seem to me very efficient so to compare with the other uh, approaches. And we were able to, uh, to predict uh, and validate experimentally the structure of metal particles containing thousands of hours. And in terms of uh, uh, structural dynamics, in particular, uh, the search for the possible reaction path, we have this reactive global optimization method. And if you're interested, uh, this is a, a book that uh, we published together with Parkonet uh, six years ago. And the chapter that we, uh, that we, we published in this book uh, was about two dioxide, but also, the first part is meant, and there is a unified view of global optimization method for structure prediction that you might be interested in. I don't go into the details of this. Uh, and also, uh, just mentioned that uh, um, we were perhaps 
uh, why these methods that we developed, developed for global optimization were so efficient? Because we combined uh, stochastic searches with descriptor theory. So we were, we were able to use descriptors to accelerate structural sample. And this is uh, one of the things that now has been also um, taken up of uh, other groups and also as connection with macular methods. So in terms of catalysis, we have studied the, the several reactions. And uh, uh, the latest addition is, uh, as uh, Gareth mentioned, the oxygen evolution reaction on the synergy side. And this is what we uh, uh, what we will discuss today. Although we have good experience on uh, oxygen reduction reaction, other both uh, uh, ecosystems recording and other catalytic reactions from metal and metal sensors. Why is uh, um, water splitting interesting? I don't need to discuss. Uh, it's one of the possibilities to get uh, a, a hydrogen energy and uh, a green uh, chemistry in terms of uh, energy. So uh, there is a lot of interest and a lot of work, a lot of research in this uh, in this area. And one of the, the ways to get uh, to produce hydrogen is by uh, water splitting. So difficult reaction, especially for this part. So you have a, 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 you apply a chemical um, bias, and then you split water into hydrogen and oxygen. But especially this. Uh, this under the reaction, the oxygen evolution is uh, uh, hard to achieve. Uh, there are not so many systems that do it efficiently. There is a lot of problem with over protection. Uh, there is a problem with multiple electron transfer and so on and so forth. I mean, you're as familiar as I am with this reaction, so I don't spend too much time on this. But what we uh, what we focus is uh, uh, okay. Which catalyst do we use for this reaction? Ruthenium and uh, iridium oxides are very efficient, uh, which can work in under uh, which acidic and uh, basic conditions, but uh, they're not uh, uh, sustainable. There are uh, environmental issues uh, for ruthenium oxide uh, and can be toxic and cancerogenic and cancerogenic. And so on, and also uh, they're not so abundant. So uh, there is a lot of research on non noble three D transition metal like the first row and so on, iron, uh, cobalt, and so on. And uh, so we focus basically, uh, so we decide to go along these uh, lines and uh, we focus our research on skin oxide and uh, bimetal, so basically ferrites. Okay, so the, 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 the session that uh, we have today is uh, divided into three parts. The first part is the technical modeling uh, of the mechanics of this uh, oxygen evolution reaction of a couple of uh, spin loops. The second part it will be the structural classification of the system. And then I will finish with brief consideration on catalytic stuff. Let's go for the first part the mechanistic, mechanistic model. Um, this is the, the this is the paper that we just published, and uh, in this paper we focus on nickel uh, ferrite and cobalt ferrite in their inverse uh, spin structure, and then we investigated the mechanism pathway of OER, and then we try to uh, focus on the rate and step and the transition state structure of this rate and step. And then we evaluate the kinetics uh, with the, the computational derived uh, mechanism. And so we try to compare with the uh, turnover frequency experiment. I don't need to talk about this uh, in this context, Tato. You're again well familiar with that. But anyway, these are the signal sites that just to briefly remember. There are uh, these two big structure with uh, tetrahedral sites and then octahedral sites and uh, uh, types of octahedral sites. Well, uh, in the normal scenario, uh, basically it's uh, the, the class two cations, cations by the tetrahedral sites. 
whereas the, the, the plus C cations occupy the octahedral sites. But the inverse kinetics that, that uh, is what we're uh, going to talk about today, uh, they basically, the uh, two plus cations occupy up to the octahedral sites, um, and then the Completely three plus cations occupy half of the perimeter and the temperature side, so it's different. And uh, nickel and uh, cobalt are the two plus, uh, and iron is will be the two plus. So this is the distribution of the of ions. The computational product uh, it's pretty standard. Uh, we use uh, the NT plus U calculations. Uh, we use quantum express code. We use PV exchange for electron function for the DFT part, and we also use for the U uh, this uh, set of parameters for ion and cobalt respectively. Um, these systems, uh, the inverse kinetics, are very magnetic. And uh, okay, these are some um, details about the number of layers and so on. Uh, to remember uh, that uh, the, the speed. States uh, those spin, I spin, and so on. Uh, you, you're well familiar with that, and so I don't go into the details. The tetrahedral and octahedral, there is the crystal splitting, which is uh, the one the inverse of the other, and so on and so forth. Um, now we have the first slot problem, which is how to model, how to introduce the bias. Again, we didn't do anything new here, we use the non scopal approach. In which basically uh, you have the alternative of uh, using the uh, studying the reaction under acidic or basic conditions, and then uh, basically uh, the, 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 you can use uh, uh, the, uh, this or this uh, uh, modeling, which means that when you have uh, a surface with uh, a, a hydrogen absorbed, this can go into the solution, becomes H plus, and the electron goes into. System, or you can uh, this uh, hydrogen can be abstracted by a which minus and become water. Okay, so uh, we used to um, the simple modeling in which to do to have the energetics of this process, like this process, you need to have the energetics of the H plus and, and the electron. Well, it's and also propose that, that if you can use the, the fact that uh, at the, uh, the standard hydrogen electron as a reference, in which basically the free energy of each plus, plus the electron is equal to one half of the uh, free energy of G2, the gas phase, which is very easy to calculate. So you can use this model, and then it's very easy to uh, basically take all your DFT data and complement with this approximation of this modeling because when you work at the bias which is not the standard hydrogen so bias equal to zero when it's zero okay you use simply this uh, uh, one half h2 as the reference and then uh, you calculate the delta g between two states and then when you go and this is for uh, the bias equal to zero when the bias is different from zero Basically, you take into account that the electron goes into a, a system with a word function, higher word function. So you go, uh, you have a stabilization and instead of having this uh, energy difference that you calculate at the FT level, you have uh, this minus EB which goes down. And so you refail or you reprocess or your PN diagram taken from the FT at uh, zero volt, uh, zero bias. It's easy to uh, modify the, the, the free energy diagram and uh, working bias. Of course, there are some uh, limitations also because in this study we didn't uh, um, uh, introduce the vibrational entropy and uh, and so the, the effect of the vibration of the free energy of the system. So the, the, the energies that uh, we present. Are simply getting um, uh, local minima energies. But um, this is an approximation, but I, I think that uh, we can check that, that it's probably not too strong an approximation for the 
uh, afterwards, after the fact, when we go to the rate determined sets. Now, what is the problem? The problem now is that uh, um, we expect, and indeed, this is what we found afterwards, that the rate determined set is the oxygen oxygen bond formation. So, typically, this, uh, this step is uh, uh, the interaction of an oxygen in a hydroxy to form an hydroperoxide. Why is it uh, uh, typically this the uh, favorite uh, mechanism? It's because uh, basically there are both steam and energetic reasons why this is typically uh, the, the what happens. Uh, steam is because uh, uh, you have to, if you create uh, a, an oxygen oxygen bond directly, you have the triple oxygen for two effect. The triple phase is difficult to form, whereas uh, OH is a uh, double, so it's easier uh, to interact with the, let's say, it's zero oxygen to uh, adapt the OH to get the double uh, uh, OH. Uh, but also for energy, it's because uh, in this way you have only one oxygen which is uh, uh, in this uh, uh, unprotected state, which is usually. Which is usually uh, the higher in energy than the hydroxy. And so, in this way, uh, also energetically, it's safe. But when, depending on where the oxygen and the hydroxy come from, you can have different mechanisms. And the three of these we have investigated, and you can also find in the literature. But just to uh, remind the, 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 uh, the acronym that you will find later. Uh, there is the lattice oxygen mechanism and the lat long and the last fix oxygen mechanism, the oxypath. Let me explain. So, in this case, you have the oxygen which comes from the lattice, and the OH, the hydrox, comes from the absorbed, uh, absorbed uh, surface. Okay, so you have uh, these two which react and makes. OH here. Okay. You can have the reverse, so you can have the oxon, the absorbed oxon here interacting with the uh, lattice hydroxy. And then you can also uh, have the same or similar, uh, different species, of course, you produce a different species with different position of the hydrogen, but uh, this is a different mechanism. Another possibility, again, another possibility is the so called absorbed evolution mechanism or AEM. And in this case, uh, we'll, let's uh, look at here, you have an oxon here, an uh, absorbed oxon, which interacts with the water molecule coming from the uh, solution. And this water molecule uh, protonates one of the oxygen of the uh, lattice. And uh, creates uh, a oxygen oxygen bond. So at the end of the story, you see you have an OH external and a protonated oxygen. There are other mechanisms that uh, I will not discuss because for these symptoms, they were we tested them, but they were higher in energy, like the interaction of an oxygen with uh, a hydroxy both absorbed on the surface. Um, um, so I will not discuss that, but let's uh, uh, present directly the results of our investigation. So the results of our investigation are something like that. So are the uh, some catalytic cycles in which you can go for the long mechanism or also pathway or uh, absorbed evolution mechanism. And then uh, you, uh, you, will, uh, you, you can compare directly which are uh, the free energy diagrams, which are uh, according to this different mechanism, and then you, will, uh, you can compare which one is the favorite one. So let's start with the nickel ferrite 100 pattern. Okay, so um, with the FD, you generate many configuration many possible configuration of what of uh, the bare surface first and then surface with for example you can start with absorbed water okay and then you start transforming 
this absorbed water into hydroxyl or protonating the, the uh, surface oxygen, and you generate very many configurations. Um, I don't go into all the details, so you can find all these configurations uh, uh, in the supplementary material and also on Zenodo. So they are available if you want to, uh, anybody is, wants to use them. Uh, when you do this exercise, then you find, of course, the relative energies of all these structures. And then you find the so called resting state, so which is the under the given condition of uh, both uh, bias and age, which is the lowest energy structure. And in this case, in the case of uh, Nicolaitis, it turns out that uh, under the conditions of uh, that we get segmented, but corresponds to the evolution reaction, this is the lowest energy structure. Note that in this structure, you have on the nickel, you have an absorbed water. On the iron, you have an hydroxy. Not some of the oxygen on the surface are protonated, but not all of them. And the difference between the surface of oxygen is that the one that are connected, uh, linked to uh, underneath the tetrahedral uh, cation, uh, they are less, uh, it, it takes uh, um, uh, more energy to protonate, or it's the one that they're uh, more easily deprotonated. So there is an energy difference also between the, of course, the uh, lattice optics. So if you want to uh, do uh, oxygen evolution reaction from this, then you can take away the site and then you can do a, a long and the lattice. So, so this hydroxy can interact with the oxygen, or you can transform this into an oxo, and then you interact directly with this, or you transform into an oxo and then absorb a water molecule which protonates the other. Uh, oxygen uh, on the back, uh, and then you have the uh, absorption evolution. Uh, okay, so we have studied the, uh, all these configurations, and then you see that the, the favorite configuration has this arrangement in which there is a water, hydroxy, and hydroxy and oxygen on the back. So it's not trivial, it's very system dependent. You have to calculate that. Maybe you can. Assume some rules and so on, but uh, you have to calculate that all this possible configuration. And this is the um, sum of the configuration that we have uh, investigated for this system. And you see that there are uh, a few. Uh, but I will not go into the details of that. Better to go directly into the free energy diagram. So you do this, uh, you also calculate. Uh, the, we will see in a minute uh, the energy barriers among the configurations, and then you get the, the free energy diagram at the zero, for example, for the this is the lattice oxygen mechanism. The black is the lattice oxygen mechanism traditional, the uh, red uh, at zero bias, uh, the red is the lattice oxygen mechanism oxopath, so the alternative path, uh, still at zero bias. What if you use uh, the bias, uh, for example, uh, this is uh, the minimum bias for oxygen reaction is 1.23, but uh, uh, usually there is some over potential, and uh, the best catalyst now there is that have been proposed uh, at like 0.25 in the over potential. So typically we have uh, plotted uh, uh, our results at uh, a typical bias of 1.48. And you see that in this case uh, the uh, lattice of oxygen mechanism, the black becomes uh, under the given bias, the, the green, and you see that uh, the highest barrier along this path is the first one, which is the oxygen oxygen bond formation. Okay. So also oxygen evolution has some barrier, but it's much smaller in this case. So uh, uh, we Mm, not work. for other systems it could be, and so we could discuss also. Uh, but in this case, the, um, is uh, uh, this uh, uh, this is a uh, let's say summary of uh, the uh, long path for this system. So you see, this is the energy diagram, and these are the configuration uh, that I mentioned, that like uh, the, the resting state. The resting state, 
which is this one, the first one, and then you go 19, which is two, which is in one in which you have deprotonated the lattice of oxygen here, from here to here, and then you form the OH species and so on. This OH species is actually the highest point in the free energy diagram. So when you do a NED calculation, so a, a search for a variable, you see that basically you don't have any variable, additional variable. So this uh, configuration is actually a transition state configuration. Um, instead, uh, but you have to do NED to make sure because, for example, in this oxopath, if you don't do NED with uh, CI, so find the image, you get the barrier which is much lower and the proper barrier is this. So, um, this, uh, this uh, let's say, potential surface are not that free. Um, let's skip the oxygen evolution and uh, let's look for the alternative impact still on nickel ferrite. And the alternative path is the uh, um, absorbent evolution method. And again, we have just discussed that we have the oxygen state, we have uh, this uh, configuration, this one, which is already higher energy, and then this protonates, we have the transition state in which the oxo and the water are properly aligned. And this, I mean, is not clear because they tend to repel each other. So this is why the transition state is higher. And in this case, it turns out that it is significantly higher. So basically, uh, no, I don't. Uh, so basically, the transition state is too high energy and it's much higher. The barrier is at about 1.48 TB, which is much higher than 0.99 TB that was in the alternative. So the, for the nickel ferrite, since that on the one year, so the uh, fabric cap is the uh, traditional standard law. Uh, you we have done the same with color, which might look like a system, but actually there are differences, uh, significant differences. And basically, in this case, both cobalt and iron can act as catalytic sites. First of all, you can you immediately see that when you look at the uh, at these uh, uh, two structures, so these structures are the same, except that here you have uh, uh, water absorbed nylon and a hydroxy absorbed of cobalt, and here it's three. You have the water absorbed on, uh, cobalt and an hydroxy absorbed on uh, iron. Well, basically at the DSP level, there is no uh, the uh, energy difference if it's two structure is zero, they're the generators. And so basically these are the two states where so you have to study both part, the part catalyzed by iron, the part catalyzed by cobalt in this case. And so we call the cobalt assist co CO site assisted or uh, I site assisted or uh, um, I don't go into all the details of this uh, Investigation. Uh, um, the conclusions are that the, the uh, cobalt assisted, the cobalt site assisted part is typically lower. So, at variance with the different right here is the cobalt, which is playing a, a crucial role in the oxygen evolution reaction. Perfect. Second, also the mechanism. The energetics of the comparative energetics of the different mechanisms in this, because in this case, this is the uh, lack of uh, uh, oxygen uh, mechanism, and you see that uh, uh, at the end of the story, the barrier is 1 of 0, 3, okay, which is higher than the barrier on the CO side, which is higher than the barrier that we have on the iron side. But uh, you see that on the uh, for the alternative uh, absorbent evolution mechanism, which was higher energy of the atom, 
Here it's lower in energy. And you see that uh, first uh, the, um, the real pricing state is not the starting the configuration that we've seen before, but it's this 10 configuration. So uh, it's uh, OH, H, but the, the oxidative oxygen is different later. And then you have this uh, configuration, which is uh, the uh, uh, 10 prime, which is this configuration. And this configuration is 0 0.65 plus this. So basically, you have uh, a, an energy barrier of 70. So a lower energy barrier than on the previous system, on the nickel line. Um, so here we have a problem from the um, theory point of view because so far we have used only neutral. We have used the NOS of a trick and we have used only neutral configurations. We can also do charge configuration, but as you know, with the time wave calculations, uh, charge system have problems in terms of uh, electrostatic divergence and so on. We still have tried uh, to do this, and we still have tried to go and test whether the uh, neutral uh, modeling, which is uh, uh, valid for acidic configurations, was also um, not too really different from what you get from basic configuration, in which, for example, you have an explicit OH minus, so an ion coming from the uh, solution. And uh, I don't know how, we, how much we can trust this configuration. Uh, we tried to uh, start from an OXO state and have an OH minus from the surface directly interacting with the OXO state, and so forming the OH. Um, we have used, we must use here the some kind of uh, solvation, and we use the implicit solvation model. So it is the end, basically. Um, and what we discovered is that uh, this competitive path with the OH minus coming directly from the center for this is not the only possibility I must say, but it had a barrier, and this barrier made it uh, the uh, sum of point higher than the one that we found for the neutral phase, and the, the barrier was basically connected with the desolvation of the OH minus. I don't know how much we can trust uh, the accuracy of this calculation, but still, this seems that uh, physically reasonable to me because um, the OH minus and the dissolvation of OH minus is certainly, uh, in, to me, in, in, in such a large uh, solvation energy of a touch system, it is uh, uh, significant. It's, uh, it's larger, and so it should play a role somewhere. So, um, yes, we have started the same story. I mean, we have uh, also done all the configurations, uh, search also for the, uh, for the states, for the iron uh, site, and so on. But just to simply to conclude the first part and to see, okay, now we have the energy barriers. How do they compare with the experiment? Well, this is the comparison. So you can use transition free theory, and then you have a, another frequency, which is the, uh, this formula. And then you can compute from the experiment uh, the uh, current and so on and so forth, and you uh, derive the experimental turnover frequency, you compare it. So for the nickel ferrite, for example, um, we predict that uh, depending on the over potential, there is significant difference, but it should be between 0 0.8 and 0 0.25 seconds to minus one, the turnover frequency. The experimental one is, uh, well, here yeah, there is a lot of uh, scattering of the experimental uh, data. So we don't know um, to which data we should compare with, but at the same, Bias zero, uh, over potential of 0 0.4, but then we have values ranging between 0 0.02 to 0 0.08. Okay. Um, and what for the cobalt ferrite? 
for the common thread, since we predict a lower barrier, okay, then uh, we should predict, we predict that uh, at uh, any uh, potential higher than 1.2 or more, uh, the turnover frequency should be around 1.8 uh, seconds to the minus one. Well, uh, this is what we find from uh, the from uh, experiment in which we have experiment of power did this, and uh, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.09. Um, there are also other systems ready to cope up the right, which have been treated in a different way and have higher uh, turnover frequencies comparable to uh, this. Clearly, um, we're not, I think that, that uh, unless we have something more uh, from an experiment, uh, it's difficult to say. There is something going on here in terms of structure, in terms of uh, comparison between the theory and the ideal structure that you showed with the experimental structures, something that uh, needs more um, more study and more uh, information. But the message is that the common ferrite should be more active than the nickel ferrite, and this seems to be in tune with the experiment. The uh, active site should be the cobalt, which seems also to be in tune with some experimental evidence, and the turnover frequency are in the ball range of what they find. We find the experiment. So let's go to the second part of study. So, so far we have studied only the 100 surface. Well, but we can also study other surfaces, other parts of this system. We can try to calculate the surface energies and then to predict, for example, the good shape of these systems. And this is what we've done. And we have done it both for pair surfaces and, as we'll see in a second, also for color surfaces. Okay, these are the structural model. This is the 100. The 110 and the 111. And uh, um, this is for the inverse spin and this is for the normal spin and because in this case we also investigated the uh, zinc uh, uh, cobalt 204, which is a normal spin um, And this is uh, what we predict, uh, let's say, ideally in the dust phase. So if you have uh, these uh, uh, surfaces completely free of uh, stoichiometric and completely free of any absorbent, then this is what we you predict. And you predict that the 100 facet is the one with the lowest energy. And so it should appear more populated, let's say. The 111 is the second lowest, and the 110 is the uh, higher. And you Basically, we only see it in some cases, but not too much, which seems to be in tune with previous uh, uh, systematic studies by its uh, other, uh, which, I mean, seems to uh, be in tune with this uh, previous theoretical definition. But what you, you're really interested is not the, the particle in the gas phase. But the particle in the presence of some absorbents. So, in the presence of ligands like hydroxyl, water, O2, and so on. And so, we did, we really did the same uh, study with the three facets of uh, only cobalt ferrite, focusing on cobalt ferrite, which seemed to be the most interesting uh, catalyst. And uh, we passed from uh, stoichiometric symmetric slabs for the uh, gas phase to no stoichiometric but symmetric slab for the um, uh, for the um, system that we then covered uh, with uh, uh, linens. And note that uh, to go from here to uh, there, so from uh, uh, stoichiometric to no stoichiometric, you have to make uh, this surface smoother, you have to produce some of the protruding, for example, the trigger ions that appear in the, uh, in the bare uh, stoichiometric uh, facet. 
So we use a similar approach to what we have used before, only without the reaction, but only uh, the energies of a different configuration. And again, uh, for the 100, we did the, the usual uh, the, the water, the hydroxy, the protonated, and so on and so forth. We studied all this configuration for the 101, for the 110 again. But there is something here that I would like to point out that was surprising to us. If we have not made mistakes, um, this uh, uh, configuration, uh, which is the 110 and also the 111, was uh, which is, uh, let's say, uh, um, irregular facet was stabilized a lot by oxygen in this position, this brief position. And also for the 111, here you see that there is an oxygen which is in between these uh, uh, two cations. And it seems to be stabilizing significantly because the absorption energy is something like 0 0.7. And if you don't use oxygen, if you try to put hydroxyl or water and so on, you get less absorption energy. So it seems that oxygen also stabilizes this specific surface. Okay, and so we did not include the stoichiometric pass or the uh, chemical uh, change from stoichiometric to non stoichiometric surface because that implies chemical potential of the cations that depends on the conditions. So we do not include in that there. But we include all the absorption energies and we calculate the surface energies with the inclusion of the absorption of hydroxyl and so on. Assuming uh, clearly for oxygen, uh, uh, chemical potential of oxygen in gas phase, other conditions, or water, we know, and so on. And you see that uh, there is a big difference because uh, the uh, 100 surface that uh, was the, the lowest energy here in the band, it loses against the 101. And so for the bear, you have a prevalence of 100. For the uh, under um, solution, let's say, you have a preference of 111 facets. So you go from a, a, the limit of a cube to a limit of a octane. Um, as I mentioned, there is this uh, um, oxygen absorption. Which is interesting. So we said, okay, but is it possible to change the energetics, the surface energetics, by varying the oxygen pressure? And uh, yes, it is possible. And there is a significant effect if you the assumption that uh, you stabilize the one one surface only with O two. But if you go to low oxygen pressure, then you can stabilize the 111. And if you go to high oxygen pressure, then you stabilize the 111. And so you can go significant uh, with a significant difference uh, in the limit of uh, the max score pressure of uh, oxygen. And this is a limit because at this point, I mean, the 111 is stabilized by other species. Less favorable, but still we didn't include that. But in the limit of 10 to the minus one, in this approximation, you get the heat. Which um, is interesting in the sense it suggests that O2 acts as a polygon of the catalyst, because according to our modeling, the catalytic act is surface into 100. So if you go here, you don't have a to high oxygen pressure, you don't have any of the 100. So it seems like the O2, which is evolving on the surface, acts also as a poison because it tends to favor the catalytically inactive surface. How this uh, compare with the experiment? Let's uh, just uh, skip most of it and go directly to couple of comparison. And you see that uh, here there is uh, a microscopy image. I don't remember now the experimental details, but uh, you see that 
you have something like a, 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 I could say, a, a octagon. So you see that, that here, at least for this particular uh, and this particular uh, uh, articles, it seems that uh, they're looking like something one 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 is winning. And also the other ones have uh, some, but you see that uh, you, you can see experimentally some facet movement. And also the microscopy, you can see some of the, uh, so I don't, I don't know whether there is a systematic study at the experimental level of these uh, shades uh, under uh, realistic conditions, but it would be interesting. Uh, certainly, we did not model this higher high um, index uh, facet, which could be interesting. But you see that uh, I mean, depending on the condition, there is a lot of uh, difference. So there is something that it, it would be worthwhile to uh, understand better. And so this is uh, this was uh, the, the conclusion. The part one. Now in two minutes, I would like to finish with some very general and uh, very simple trivial consideration on catalyst design. So, and uh, the, the one that, uh, uh, the, the only concept that I would like to uh, underline is the, this uh, idea of the incremental reconstruction of the PN data. So, suppose that you have uh, theoretically um, a complete free energy data. You see that you have the steps in which, which are either predetermined or potentially predetermined because changing the catalyst could be predetermined. And so the point is that can we reconstruct this uh, free energy diagram from not only from theory, but from experiment? Because if you do a kinetic analysis of the system, basically you discover that what is important uh, is basically the, uh, as, you, as you have seen before, uh, so you, you take the delta G, so the free energy uh, difference between the lower state, the resting state and the standard, the highest absolute point, and this already give you uh, a, um, a, a good estimate of the kinetics. And this we have seen not only on this system, but in many other systems. So if you do a more refined approach in and so on, in many cases that you get something that some great estimation estimates that are not too different from this simple approach. So at this point, it suggests that we want to, uh, to study this reaction. But is there a way of uh, reconstructing uh, so the lowest energy configuration and the subtle point from the experiment well, I mean, this is not me here to what uh, has been done in certain sense in the 90s by her, in the sense that uh, what did he do? I mean, in this case, he had, uh, he didn't have, but uh, he could have had this free energy diagram in which there is a subtle point here and there is a lower energy state here this from our calculation. And then the, this is the subtle point and then it goes down to these foreign states. And what it did is to do backwards. So it prepared the foreign states and then studied what is the energy barrier from these states to the uh, end to evolution. So if we manage to find experimentally upon uh, uh, perhaps theory indications, which are the key states, the key configuration that play, play a role the catalysis, then maybe it's possible to investigate them experimentally and to derive the information that can be directly used to reconstruct the free energy diagram purely from either purely from experimental data or uh, with the help of uh, validated uh, theory. And we have to discuss this uh, in this perspective that we found years ago. 
in which we discuss uh, also to be materials uh, and, and uh, you can find uh, uh, this more information on our previous study set To finish the analysis, well, first of all, the people. So this is a uh, token. Uh, Archie, who was a, a PhD student, uh, was just finished a PhD and uh, we start to focus on this uh, thing of science. And this is uh, Luca Trenta, uh, a younger uh, a colleague at Siena in Pisa. Uh, it, the funding uh, was from the uh, BIKE project, which was an IPN uh, project. And it was focused on biometallic catalysts. For energy application, in particular for hydrogen production. And uh, let me finish uh, advertising uh, one that there is one research position uh, which is open within the Italian sorry, uh, PNRR, which is the National Plan for Resiliency and Recovery. And there is a, one research position, one PhD position. And the, the theory uh, group in Pisa that we would like uh, to advertise and see whether there is people that might be interested in um, opening very soon. So, in January, February, it should be uh, open and then quickly completed. And let me finish by thanking you for your attention.